Let's just rise up as we open the service today. We know that the presence of the Lord is with us. We know that the angels are here with us. We know that there's fellowship in heaven. Let's just say thank you to the Lord for even another week that he has brought us through. He has brought us through another glorious week. Let's say thank you to him for life, for his grace, for his mercy, for his strength. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Father. Oh Lord, for us being able to gather here today, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by your spirit. We thank you for strength, O Lord, Father, that you have given unto us. We thank you for the release of grace, O Lord, that has made it possible for us to gather in your presence today. We give you all the glory. Lord, even as we fellowship today, Lord, we ask for your presence, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for a display of your power, display of your glory in the name of Jesus. Let this house be filled with your glory, even as we, Lord, gather today, as we gather in unity, as we gather, in Lord, to fellowship in your presence. We pray, Lord, for Lord, your glory to come down today in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to see signs, we want to see wonders, we want to see testimonies, even as we gather in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, even as your word comes forth, it will come to bless each and every heart today in the mighty name of Jesus. It will bring about change. It will bring about transformation, O oh Lord, in our lives, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, even as we gather today, that, Lord, God Almighty, speak to us, speak to our hearts, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we may receive of you, O oh Lord, that we may receive of your heavenly blessings today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for Lord, even the instrumentalists, the singers, everyone that is going to Lord lead the service today. I pray, Lord, for an unction, O Lord, to function in the name of Jesus. I pray that Lord, even as they, Lord God Almighty, carry out their duties, that Father, Lord, you will bless their hearts, O Lord, that they may bless us, O Lord, today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for open heavens, even as the songs come. We pray for open heavens, Lord, a release from heaven today in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, even as we gather today, unity, that, Lord, the Bible says you call, yeah, you command your blessings. I pray that you bless us, O oh Lord, today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the glory. We, Lord, come against every plan of the enemy, for we know that he's running through our room. Lord, for seeking for whom to devour. We are not unaware of his devices today. We come against every plan of the enemy against, Lord, this service. We nullify them by the power of the blood in the name of Jesus. We come against, oh Lord, every strategy, every, Lord, device, every scheme of the enemy, oh Lord, against anyone here, against, oh Lord, this service. We nullify it by the power of the blood in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Lord, we pray that, Lord, even as we gather, we are not, not even, we are, on, we are aware that, Lord, the angels are with us. We are aware that, Lord, the heavenly Lord hosts are here. Lord, we say, have your way today by the power of your spirit. Lord, we yield ourselves, O oh Lord. It is not by, Lord, power, but it's not by my hands, not by might, but it's by your spirit, O oh Lord. Lord, let your spirit lead us, even as we go into this service today in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the leading of your Holy Spirit, the unction of your spirit, O Lord, to function today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. By the choir, uh, worship team, hallelujah. Oh, sorry, Mama. It's um, Mama. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I knew. Oh, Mama. Sorry. Okay. I always bless you. Okay. Praise the Lord. I'm reading two Psalms this morning. Amen. Father, bless this word. Let it go forth with your power and your authority in the name of Jesus. We ask you to bless us in Jesus' name. We're going to be reading Psalm 86 and 87. Praise the Lord. The psalmist says, Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God, save your servant who trusts in you. 
Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Praise the Lord. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call on you. Praise God. Praise God. So it, it, that it, he, he's coming to the Lord in humility. You know, he's no, he's not puffed up. You know, he's coming in humility. You know, and it, it looks as if this affliction is great. You know, and the Lord, he's calling on the Lord to hear and answer his prayer. You know, and so God, God loves to see someone who's broken and needy to come to him. He says, call upon me and I will answer. Sometimes we call on everyone else. We ring this one, that one, and the other one before we call on the Lord. So it's important, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you. So remember, when you're in trouble, call to him. You will be calling on him anyway. If you're living a Christian life, you'll call on him every morning and thank him. But, you know, if you don't, don't just rush to call other people. Call upon him. And he said, he will answer. And this, he's confident that for you will answer, he said. You will answer me. He's not saying God might answer me. God will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. So he's praying for the future generations, you know, all the people you have made. So that would be our prayer, you know, for the nations to come to them, to come to him and have a relationship with him. That's what God longs for, that intimate relationship, you know. And they will bring glory to your name. So when you come to the Lord, you bring glory to his name. You know, those who call on him bring glory to his name. Praise the Lord. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. I'm oh, sorry, I missed the line. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Have we seen his marvelous deeds? I have. I have seen his marvelous deeds. The fact that he called us out of darkness into light and that we've come out of the darkness and we're in the light, that's marvelous in my eyes. That's marvelous. You know, he, he, you know, he says, come as you are, heavily laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. And that's great encouragement for those who feel afar off or feel that they're not worthy. And the devil is a great habit of making people feel not worthy. The Bible says, it contradicts us, he said, come as you are, come as you are. Praise God. In verse 11, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. So he's done everything to teach us. We have this word of God. Everyone owns a Bible. So that's how we're taught. And all the different explanations we have here, people coming up and preaching and teaching, and all the courses you go to and all that. That's the way he teaches you. And I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart. That's our great prayer today. You know, our whole heart must be surrendered to him. Not a bit of it. Our whole mind, heart, soul, everything, surrender to him. You know, that's what it means. When you give your life to the Lord, you surrender everything to him. You know, so some people keep one little division in their heart. They, they talk about everything as a little, one little chamber in their heart that they keep to themselves and they don't bring it to the Lord and they don't discuss it. So, you know, he wants you to bring all you have. Just because he knows already. He knows already what's in our heart. So why would you be ashamed of giving him everything that's troubling you, everything that's not, that you haven't surrendered? You know, but it's the Holy Spirit quickens you to show you what you haven't surrendered at times, you know. The Holy Spirit will quicken you, you know, and it will make such a huge difference, you know. I was talking to someone yesterday, and, you know, I, I just, I, it must be the Holy Spirit told me, have you rebuked the curse over that place, you know, that property, you know, uh, you know, that, that is something you would do. And, you know, but God quickened my spirit to say that to someone, you know, have you, you know, have you done that? You know, the curse over your property, you know? So praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit guides us and teaches us. And that person had never thought of that. And I hadn't thought of it before, you know, and I discussed it plenty with that person, you know. I will glorify your name forever. We are steadfast. That is our intention, that we will glorify his name forever, while on earth, while in heaven. Praise the Lord. Uh, for great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. 
And as I said, he has delivered us. Praise the Lord. From all our afflictions, we are delivered because he paid that great price to his son, Jesus, for us. The arrogant are attacking me, O Lord. Well, arrogant people do that. They attack people with, by word of mouth, usually, and other ways, too. But word of mouth is how they attack you, you know, the arrogant. You know, and it's an arrogant spirit that's attacking you. It's not the person. You know, it's an arrogant spirit behind it. You know, sometimes we look at the person and we have bad thoughts about them and that. It's the spirit behind them. Look, look behind, you know, the, what's surrounding them. You know, it is a bad spirit, a bad spirit. And, you know, that's why, like, a lot of children even have that. They're arrogant. You know, it's the spirit that's behind that. You see them, like, there's programs and that about the nanny and all that. And you see the arrogant spirit in the child, you know. When she comes to try and help the parents, a band of ruthless men seek my life, men without regard for you. So that's evil, you know, it's evil, evil behind it. They're coming against this psalmist. Praise the Lord. But there are a lot of darkness comes against us because we're children of God. But we know we have the whole armor on, we have that shield up. Praise the Lord. We have the blood of Jesus covering us, and we have angels surrounding us. So we're well, well hidden, hidden in him. We're hidden in him. We're hidden in Christ. Praise the Lord. But you, O oh Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Well, we see his compassion every day. You know, he was compassionate to come to us as sinners. Compassionate. You know, and he's always compassionate. And he, you know, he knows every tear you shed. It says he collects them in a bucket. You know, you think he doesn't take notice of your tears, but he does, he does. He's slow to anger, he's abounding in love and faithfulness. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. So, you know, the devil will tell you God will be very angry with you for doing that. But he said he's slow to anger, he's abounding in love and faithfulness. The devil will try everything to keep you away from repenting and coming to the Lord. He will try all these little tricks that you won't feel worthy. Oh, Lord, I am not worthy. But he's made you worthy because of what he's done on the cross. You are worthy. You are worthy. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Praise the Lord. Grant your, grant your strength to your servant. We need his strength every day because we operate in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. We need it every day. Be so conscious of the Holy Spirit inside you. You know, be conscious the third person, you know, that he's inside you, that he's interceding constantly, pleading your cause before the Father. You know, he's revealing the word, giving you wisdom and knowledge and all those gifts. And stir up those gifts if you haven't stirred them up. Stir them up so that you will be pleasing unto God. Praise God. Praise God for, for the Holy Spirit. That peace that the worry cannot give, the Holy Spirit gives you that. You know, that peace and that joy that the worry cannot offer you. You know, it's the peace that passes our human understanding. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. And you know, we love to see that miracles and things like that. That's a sign of his goodness when he supplies, you know, when, he, when a debt is owed and it's suddenly paid on that. Let the, the unsaved see this. Let them see the goodness of the Lord, the goodness, you know, and that be put to shame. Like, I could have trusted and I didn't, you know. So it, 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 it awakens them spiritually, you know, when they see the goodness of the Lord on you and how you're happy and how you don't miss your services and how you look after your neighbours and you're always willing to help and glad. For you, O oh Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Praise God. He's great to comfort you. <clears throat> you know, you, you might go to bed and you might be disturbed, but the, the morning is new. And that joy of the Lord comes flooding in every morning. It comes flooding in, you know. It's only for a season, for a night, you know. Joy will come in the morning, you know, when you're experiencing difficulties. And, you know, cry out to the Lord for wisdom to walk in his ways. And for a heart that truly fears and delights in his truth. Praise God. Uh, Psalm 87. He has set his foundation on the holy mountain. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Gracious things are said of you, O city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me. You know the story of Rahab. Praise God. Uh, uh, Philistia too and Tyre along with Cush 
uh, and will say, this one was born in Zion. Indeed of Zion, I will be said, it will be said, this one and that one were born in her. Praise God. We're Zion children. And the Most High himself will establish her. Praise the Lord. The Lord will write in his register of the peoples. This one was born in Zion. Praise the Lord. He will write it. So you're very precious. He will write it, it says, in the register of the peoples. So, you know, you have a book in heaven and everything is registered there. Praise God. So there'll be no mistakes when you go up there. There'll be no mistakes at all. Everything the angels record in every detail. Every detail is recorded. Praise the Lord. You know, and you will have a great reward for what you're doing down here. A great reward. So be excited that when the books are open, you know, he will read out the lovely things you did. The lovely things you did. And he will also show you the things you could have done. You know, that you didn't take the opportunity. You know, you would see that too. You would see that too. And there's lots of opportunities we miss, you know. But God is merciful, you know. He goes to the next one, you know. Like uh, I often said, you know, he might have asked three before you and they didn't do anything. They didn't get up off their seat. You may be the fourth and you rise up and do what it is. But that doesn't mean he hasn't tried other people who just hadn't their ear tuned. So that's, you tune your ear every morning to hear what he's saying to you. Tune your ear that you will hear what God is saying, you know. And then do it as, 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 as an act of faith every morning. I tune my ear to what you would say to me today, Lord. You know, when you have your, your radio turned on and tuned in and television and all that tuned in, like, it will come, you know. It will come through the airwaves, you know, the radio waves and that. It will come and you will hear. It's the same with your ear. You have to tune it to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, as they make music, they will sing, all my fountains are in you. There's rivers of living water flowing out of you and to others. To think, you know, think of yourself as a big, massive river, rivers of living water flowing out of you to help the thirsty, the people who are thirsty for God. It's flowing out of you onto others. Let it flow. Let it flow out through you to others. You, you are the one who brings joy to others through the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. So never forget that. You are very valuable. You might think this morning you're very valuable. You know, I just live there and I just do a bit of work. You're so precious to him. He doesn't see you that way. He sees you as a mighty, mighty warrior. You're a mighty warrior. And you children down there, you're mighty warriors in God with big muscles, joy, big muscles, you know, all Glory, big muscles for the Lord. A love and a thirst for the Lord. Start there with your small little children. That's where to start. That that love will be in you, planted in you this very time. And I pray that in Jesus' name, that the seed of the Lord be planted in you this morning, all three of you, in Jesus' name. A new start. A new, looking forward to what Jesus is going to do in your lives. You know, you're going to grow up and get your exams and you're going to go to secondary school and you're going to be out there in the workforce as mighty warriors and giving glory to the Lord. Now see yourself like that. Don't see yourself defeated or I'm not good at mathematics. I'm not good at this or that. God perfects everything. What you're not good in, he will help you. Just call on him for help and he'll give you wisdom and understanding. This is, he promises to give us wisdom and understanding. So praise God. Amen. We're going to call now on Foundation Ministry, their, their beautiful choir, to come and sing glory to the Lord. Thanksgiving. Worship. Pray. Pray. Praise the Lord. They're seated at the heavenly places. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we rise up as we continue to appreciate God? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He fights our battles. He provides for us. Thank you, Lord. 
I have come to give you praise. I have come to give you thanks. I have come to give you honor. Great and mighty God, you have done it again. Has God done any good thing for you? Just take a moment and begin to think about that. Let your heart dwell on those things as you sing to them. I have come to give you praise. I have come to give you thanks. I have come to give you honor, great and mighty God. You have done it again. I have come to give you praise. I have come. I have come to give you a love. Great and mighty God, you have come to give me. Thank you. 
Give the glory, glory. 
praise the Lord. It's only God I will serve. Because I have no other God and I have nothing to believe in any other thing apart from the only God, the Alpha and Omega, the author and finisher of our faith, the I am that I am, the God of impossibilities, the God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. That is the only God I will serve. I want to thank God for protection. I just want to thank him. It can only be God. I had an appointment in regional hospital in Limerick, and I took my car, though I saw a small light, but I was not understanding what the light is all about because I've been dreaming it like that for three days. But I took up that morning. At the express, I saw the light came red. I was like, where will I stop here? I don't know where to stop, okay. God, just take me to the hospital because I have to catch that appointment. It was the last one. Because they gave me the letter, the appointment letter that if I don't come, it's the last one. And I have to pay 280 euro for holding that space. It would have been from another person. So I have to take permission from work to go. But God took me throw out the express till I got to the regional hospital. This is regional hospital. This is me. On traffic, the car could not go again. It stopped. I was shaking. I didn't know what to do because it's my first experience of breakdown. So I stopped. <laughs> I have to do traffic myself to let the other make I even forgot that I have to put on the light because I was shaking. <laughs> So I have to use my hand to start stopping them to pass the other way. But the mercy of God found me. People understood that I was afraid. They left their vehicles, came back to ask me if I'm okay. I told them I'm okay, it's just the vehicle that I don't want to start. And the security agencies around came out, helped me put the vehicle by the side. And then we start calling insurance. We call insurance. My insurance is comprehensive, which is supposed to cover me on breakdown. But for more than three hours, they were busy telling me they cannot, my insurance is not covering that breakdown. And there was nothing I could do. I had to leave the vehicle there. Somebody advised me to call the mechanic. I called the mechanic. He promised me to block. At six, he told me he thought he's in Ennis. He can't come to Limerick. I can't say I was frustrated. Mine was, how long would that vehicle be there and how long would I keep paying? I never knew that Mercy would still find me the next morning. I got a recovery truck here. Just at the spot, I met somebody I have helped 2011 and I never see him. And he asked me, Mama, what is it? I told him, I said, I have breakdown. I said, maybe the guy is requesting for a new one just to cover up. And he said, well, I know taking this car to um, any school cost you. How much is it? I told him I'm going to pay 150 and he paid for it for me. So I just want to thank God because it can only be God that does that. It's only God that protected me up to that extent. And no car jam me. No car hit on me because I am um, naturally when you stop like that, it can cause accident. But no car hit me. I was just panicking for nothing. And I still met, went to the appointment. They did not send me going, they still attended to me. So I just thank God. I want to thank him for his protection. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. In every department of your life, Pastor Isto, you will continue to say the hand of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Mercy will continue to find you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mercy of God will speak for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Where you cannot defend yourself, the blood will defend you. In Jesus' name, amen. Any other testifier? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. You all know that Luke was a physician, you know, a doctor. 
And in those days, I'm sure they used herbs and all those sorts of things, but um, and still use them in tablets today. But I want to give thanks to the Holy Spirit who quickened me. I think Monday, I'm not sure, Monday, Tuesday maybe, Tuesday, I started getting very confused and I couldn't differentiate between between what was real and what wasn't real. You know, you all remember a couple of years ago what happened here with me, you know, when I was up there. And um, I'd never had any recurrence, praise God. And um, it, it's very confusing because it's like you're in two different places and you can't differentiate what's real and what's not real. And all this confusion in your mind you don't know whether it's day or night. It's like being in a dream. You know, sometimes your help is in a dream to do something and you want to do it. And, you know, I started flittering around, emptying bags of literature, letters and everything, all mixed up and scrambled up. I didn't know what I was looking for. But um, that lasted about two hours and I was on my own. And when my husband came in at lunchtime, uh, I told him about it because he said, there's no point in and he said, will you go to the doctor? I said, no, I, it seems to have passed, but I'll wait, I said. And uh, I, I waited and I was getting better and better. But the Holy Spirit said to me, go and check your tablet box. I have a day and a night one, and I'm on quite a few tablets, but this little tablet I was put on many years back, I take it twice a day. And Chimway always told me, look at it and say, Thank you for your blessing, Lord. Amen. And I had, you know, I do Monday, Tuesday, the whole week, and I do the night once the same way. Whatever happened, I put my morning tablet into the night tablet. That I always take a night one as well. But I forgot to put them into the morning tablets. And I was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, without this tablet. And you can see how God is using that, you know, for me to live a full life. You know, that I, that tablet was missing in my bloodstream. There was only half the strength, but I need the full strength, obviously. So I praise God. I could have been driving. I could have been doing anything. I could have ran into someone. You know, the grace of God. Thank God. And thank God for the reminder of the Holy Spirit, because if I hadn't gone to the box, which the Holy Spirit told me to go to the box, I wouldn't have missed them all week. So I'd probably be down in the region, as my husband was saying, you need to go down to the hospital, you know. You need to record, so you need to go down. But the Holy Spirit said, check your box. Now, I would have told everyone, yes, my box is definitely right, because I count my tablets. But I had been put on an extra tablet for something else a few days before that. And because that was in, the count was right, the number of tablets. But, you know, the one was missing. There should have been an extra count, you know. So I want to praise the Lord and thank him for the, for the Holy Spirit that quickens us. It quickens us. You know, and I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful for physicians and doctors that can prescribe exactly the right dose, exactly for the right time. I give all the honor to the Lord, you know, that he's looking after me. He's bringing me into old age. I would have been probably in the Alzheimer's unit by now, you know, because that's what I would have thought it would be. Alzheimer's, she has Alzheimer's, you know, and I couldn't differentiate on all the days of the week. I came here for Bible study thinking it was the film. I came on Wednesday. I still wasn't exactly right. But praise God, I'm fully healed, totally well. Amen. 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 The Lord has perfected everything about your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Confusion is not your portion. It's not for any of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We send it back to the bottomless states where it belongs in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will continue to direct you. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. Any other testifier? Youths? Any other one? No one? Sanita, did you have okay. Can we just stand, please? So we'll commit all the yeah. testimony to the hands of the Almighty. Father, we thank you and glorify your holy name for the great and mighty things you have done in the past week. 
the organizing we have come to testify to your to the to your goodness and we use that so lord to ask for a better testimony jesus jehovah you will bless our bread and you will bless our water and take away sickness away from us this way in the mighty name of jesus we will not be confused in the mighty name of jesus we will go the right way that you have ordained for us in the mighty name of jesus you will provide for us this week oh lord we will not lack any good thing in the mighty name of jesus you will shield us from us from untimely death from accidents and from depression in the mighty name of jesus and so shall it be we soak every testimony in your in your in the blood of the lamb in the mighty name of jesus that the devil will not use our testimonies against us in the mighty name of Jesus, all that you have done that has brought joy into your kingdom, the devil will not just turn it to sorrow. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we give you praise. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let it be known today that you are God. Let this, your power fill this place and be exalted in our praise. Amen. Amen. Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are God. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise today. Amen. <laughs> Come down and fill this place and be exalted in our praise. And let it be known today that you are God. You are God, you are the Holy One, highly exalted one. We come to worship our you are the Holy One, highly exalted One, and we surround up to your sovereign will, O Lord God of Abraham, O Lord. Lord God of Abraham, you are a Isaac in this and let it be known today that you are God. Come down and fill the place and be exalted in our praise, and let it be known today that you are God.
This is the message which we which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Amen. 
Amen. You know, God is good. God is light. You know, when we look at God, there is no darkness in him, simply because of what his word says. Okay. In him there is no darkness at all. To say that God is good means that God is God always acts in accordance to what is right. Amen. God will always do what is right. Amen. What is right, what is true, and what is good. Goodness is part of God's nature, and he cannot contradict his nature. Holiness and righteousness are part of God's nature. He cannot do anything that is unholy or unrighteous. God is the standard of all that is good. Amen. You know, God cannot change his word for anybody, you know, because he is God. God will always do what is right. He will always do what is true. He will always do what is good. He, God never, ever changes. And that's what this word tries to do today. It tries to change who God is. No, and that's not who God is. Like, it tries to change everything. Why? So that, especially in some churches, you see they try to change the Bible to make people happy. You can't change the Bible. You can't make people happy when you speak the truth. When God says sin is sin, it's sin. When God says a man sleeping with a man is wrong, it is wrong. End of. When God says a woman sleeping with a woman is wrong, it is wrong. We don't change. God's work doesn't change to keep people happy. It's us that has to change. Us as human beings have to change. We're the ones that has to change, not God's word. We have to come in line with God's word and not God's word come in line with us. Amen. Because God's word is true. Amen. The fact that God is good means that he has no evil in him. The fact that God is good, he has no evil in him. You know, people would say, of the world, say, oh, if God is so good, why does evil things happen in the world? Simple answer to that. It's because people are evil. Some people are evil. It's not that God allows the evil. It's because of free will. God has given each and every human being free will. The choice to choose to do right or the choice to choose to do wrong. Amen. His intentions and motivations are always good. He always does what is right. And, and the outcome of his plan is always good. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Amen. Genesis 50, verse 20. It says, But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is, this day to save many people alive. Amen. You know, some people, when they mean evil towards us, God will turn it around for the good. You know, he will always turn it around for the good. If we don't focus on what the evil has been done to us, we focus on God. Because that's, that's what this verse is talking about here. The person focused on God. He says, but as for you, you meant evil against me. He says, but God meant it for good. You know, every time something evil happens, God always turns it around for his good. Always turns it around. Amen. 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 And it says, there is nothing unpleasant, evil, or dark in him. There's nothing unpleasant in God. There's nothing evil or dark in God. The Bible teaches, teaches that God's that God's goodness extends from his nature to everything that he does. Psalms 119, verse 68. 
And it says, the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Amen. Then go to Psalms 100 and verse 5. Psalms 100, verse 5. Amen. Psalms 100 and verse 5. And it reads, For the Lord is good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. And God is good. He's always good. He's never bad. You won't see any bad in God. Now, sometimes you might think when God wants to remove some stuff from us, you might think God is bad. But it's for our good. No, it's for our good. There's some things that we want to remain us because we, we like it. But God says, no, I don't like it. I need it gone. No, and he, he wants to remove it. And it, you know, it's, but, but it's because God is good. Now, when you come from a home and you have a loving father and a loving mother, they will always say to you, when they see you do something that is not good, they will always tell you off. It's not because they hate you. It's because they love you. And they want to see you do good. And that's the way it is with God. Because he's a loving father, he loves us so much that when he sees us doing something that is not in line with his will, he will he will rebuke us. Amen. It's, for, it's because he loves us. Everything that God made was originally good. Everything that God made was originally good. And we can see that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. It says, God saw all that he made, and it was very good. That's in Genesis 1, verse 31. Let we go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 4. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 4. And it reads, Amen. It says, for every, for every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is, re if it is received with thanksgiving. Amen. Every creature that God has created is good. Amen. Everything that God has created is good. So what does that mean? Did God create us the answer is yes. We are his creation. So if God created us, that means we can be good. Because God created because God he it says that he originally created everything good. It's just that where did it go wrong? It went wrong with man and woman. Is where it went wrong. No. Man wanted to do his own thing. Woman wanted to do her own thing. They wanted to do their own thing. They didn't want to do anything that was of God. So that's where the error came. But we are, we are originally great good. Amen. Because everything that God creates is good. Amen. So just trying to find my place here now. It says God's God's goodness is is showcased. In the law, in the law he gave to Israel, the law is holy, righteous, and good. Romans chapter seven and verse one. Oh, sorry, verse twelve. The law is good. Romans chapter seven, and verse twelve. It reads. It says, therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Amen. 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 You know, the law is there for our good. You know, when we look at natural law now, if we look at the law of Ireland, 
if the law, if we didn't have a law system, when things would break off in this country, the country would go crazy in Ireland. There'd be people looting, there'd be people breaking into people's houses, like robbers breaking into everybody's houses, uh, like people that have nice things, that have cars and everything, will all be taken if there's no law. You know, because robbers would get, would get away with, you know, and everybody would get away with killing everybody because there's no law. You know? So the law of Ireland is good for the Irish people and everybody that lives within the land of Ireland, the law is good. So it's the same with God's law. When we look at God's law, God's law is good. No, it's there to direct us. It's not there now to control us, because we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace, but it's there to direct us. It's like so I always say, those of you that drive, if you have tax, if you have a license, if you have insurance, if you have NCT, and everything is right with the car, when there's a guard at checkpoint, you don't have to go hiding because you're under the you're you're do what is right under the law so you don't have to abide now the guards when they're doing the checkpoint okay? but if you don't have any of those things when there's a checkpoint what do you do i'll return this way let me reverse and i'll go around that way and i'll find another way now you're under the law because now you're breaking the law because you're under the law you know, but when you're not breaking the law, you're not under law because you're free. Like you're free to do whatever you want with that car within the law, because now you have everything completed. You're driving. You're driving in the speed limit. You know, you're not going over the speed limit. You know, and you're doing everything right, so you're not under law, and that's the way it is with God. Amen. You know. We're not, when, when we're obeying the law, we're not under the law. The law is there to guide us, you know, like one of the laws is, you shall not sleep with your neighbor's wife. You, know, you shall not commit adultery. When you don't do those things, you're free. Amen? Amen. You know, and it says, God, create, God, God can create only what is good because he is fully good. Amen. Amen. God only creates what is good, because he's fully good. The bad things we see happen in the world has nothing to do with God. When we look at what's happening in the world right now, it has nothing to do with God, because God is good. Amen. Amen. God did not create evil. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 3. If you go to Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 3. Bring my thirty minutes. So, why why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me; therefore, is strife and contention arises. Like we see this, that this this is what's happening in the world today. You know, all this violence that's happening, iniquity. You no, know, we're seeing like people that are like that that are dying because of man. Like we see all these wars now that are these wars now that are happening. It has nothing to do with God. It has to do with man. You know? And God won't God cannot interfere because one of the things that God can't interfere is because of free will. God hasn't created robots. But not robots. He won't um, like have forces to do what we don't want to do. You know, because you no know, God didn't create evil. Rather, evil is uh, evil is the absence of goodness. It is whatever God is not, because of His goodness. Though so when we look at evil, evil is the absence of goodness. Though, so, and it's everything what God is not. God is not in it. When we see people doing evil things, God is not in it. No. Not just like not just um, in what we see happen in the world war and everything, but even in our like when we see people that are drinking and all this and going around causing causing havoc and causing issues in families, you know, being abusive and all this in families, 
No, it's because God is not involved. God is not involved in the home. No, because when God is involved in the home, there's goodness there because God is good. God adores sin and we judge and we judge it someday. Romans chapter two and verse five. No, God hates sin. And the day will come when we'll all be judged. Romans chapter two, verse five. It says, For in accordance with your hardness and your impatient heart, you you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous the righteous judgment of God. Amen. Let us not be caught up in this verse. No, let us not uh, let not our hearts be hardened towards God. You know, it is the hardness and the impatient heart. No, let not our heart be hardened and let not our heart be impatient with God. You know, and don't be treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of judgment. You know, basically, let us not be doing bad things. You know, don't be treasuring up bad things when we want, when we want to just continue doing bad things and then think that oh i can repent before i i can repent on my deathbed you know what happens if god chooses not to forgive what happens if god like oh you know, we continue our sinning and then when i lying on my deathbed and i know i'm gonna die oh i can repent now what happens if god says no don't play russian roulette with god you know don't play russian roulette with god because God could say, mm -hmm. no, you had all your life to do good and you choose to do bad. And now we know that you've got an hour to live. Now you want to repent. God could say no. Because why? Because God knows our heart. He knows why you're doing it. He knows why, oh, I repent now my death, my death bed now because my life is over. So, you know, no, because God checks the heart. Our motives are, 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 are checked by God. Amen. Amen. I'm talking to myself too. Yeah. That's why I say we Amen. 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 God's goodness should lead to thankfulness on our part. Amen. God's goodness should lead to thankfulness. No, and that's what we do. We thank God every day. No, we always thank God every day. You know, even even at night, we thank God. When we're lying in bed, we thank God. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Amen. You know, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. You know, His love endures forever. Even yet, when we were sisters, He loved us. You know, He loves us. Amen. You know, then however, people do not naturally want to follow or thank God. Instead, people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Amen. This is so, so true. When we look at the world now today, you know, people just don't want to follow God. They don't want to follow God. Why? The answer is simple. It's because they love doing evil. That's a simple answer. They love doing what is wrong. They tell God, I don't want to stop doing this. I don't want to stop drinking. I don't want to stop smoking. I don't want to stop taking drugs. I don't want to stop partying. Well, if I become a Christian now, I have to stop drinking. I have to stop taking drugs. I have to stop smoking. I have to stop going to parties. They simply just don't want to do that. You know, like let's be let's be real. You know, as preaching has to be real. You know, you have to be real with the word of God. You know, they simply just don't want to do it because they enjoy they enjoy what they're doing. You know, they love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. John chapter three and verse nineteen. This is in the Old Testament, the Israelites repeatedly rejected God's good law. 
by 4.30 through the Old Testament on Wednesdays. And we see this, where they just repeatedly kept messing up. Every time God would come and rescue them, they'd be doing well for a while, then they're messing up again. You know, and then when they're when 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 they're sick of doing what they're doing, God come and rescue us. You know, and we're reading that because two weeks ago God says, God says to no, go and pray to the idols now we are afraid to and see and see will they rescue you. You know? You know, like like but God again, what do we do? In his grace, his mercy and his love. He rescued them again. He showed them he was angry at them, you know, but yet he still loved them. You know, he still loved them. And he says, says his goodness towards um, the law for his goodness towards them and what are faithful to him. They forgot what he had done. The wonders, the wonders he had shown them. Amen. Let us not forget what God has done for us. No, that's what keeps us. No, in track with God. Let's not forget the good things He has done for us. No, the times where we know we should have died and He came and rescued us. No, the times where He answered that prayer that you cry, you you are crying out for Him to answer it, and He answered. Don't forget the goodness, the good things. But sometimes that's what makes us go do evil because we forget the good things that God has done for us. Well, that's what was happening with the Israelites. They were forgetting the good things that God done. And they kept going off into worshiping idols and everything. Ultimately, 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 yeah, you know, God's goodness is seen in his plan to redeem us from sin. You know, God's goodness is seen in his plan where he's redeemed us, he redeemed us from sin. You know, you know, God could have said, no, I'm not going to forgive you. You know, he could have said, no, I'm not going to send Jesus to die for their sins. No, I'm not going to send my son to die for their sins. He could have said, like he did say, like he could have said, you know what, let's just wipe out all human beings on the earth. And let it just be animals, because animals obey me. Human beings is the only ones that are giving me problems. Animals worship me in the morning, they worship me at night, but human beings, they're just a pain in the head. And he could have said, let's just wipe them all out, and let's just keep the earth for, for animals, and let me just provide for the animals, because they're the ones that are obedient. He could have said that. Why? Because he is God. But God, why did he not say it? Because he's a good God. Because if he did that now, that would show people that he's evil. But he's not evil, he's a good God. Yeah, he's a good God. Amen. Amen. The gospel is good news. In his goodness, God sent his son to become the perfect, blameless sacrifice so we could be forgiven of our sins. God does not want anybody to perish, but everybody to come to repentance. Amen. He doesn't want anybody to perish. God's desire is for all humans, humans on this planet to repent. It's his desire. He wants nobody to perish. He wants everybody to repent of their sin. So, no hell wasn't made for humans. Hell was not made created for humans. It was created for the devil and his demons. That's why hell was created. You know. And finally, it's he's going to say this finally. He says there is only one who is fully, truly good, and that is God. This good God invites us to seek him and to taste and see that the Lord is good. You can find that in Psalms 34 and verse 8. You know, blessed is the one that takes refuge in him. You know, the invitation today is you know, to come and taste God's goodness. 
No, come and taste God. Come and see how good God is. No, come and see how good he is. No, because he's a good God. No, it's us as human beings, we mess up. We're the ones that causes the issue. God doesn't cause issues today. It's because we enjoy sin. Now we're wondering why this, why things are happening in the world. It's because the world now enjoys sin. They enjoy it. No, so we are, you're going to eat the fruits of what you enjoy. You know, sin looks good for a season, but in the end, it brings death. And not physical death, spiritual death. Where we become spiritually dead. No, so let us this morning, like this afternoon, taste, enjoy the goodness of God. No, enjoy the goodness of God because God is good. No, He's a good God. No, I'm standing here today because of God's goodness. I have no right in my own, in my self, to be standing here today. No, but because of God's goodness, I'm standing here today. I've seen God's goodness in my life. I've seen God's goodness in my mom's life. You know, my mom, everything that she went through in life with, 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 with her own parents, with her adopted parents, because my mom was adopted, you know, and then with her husband. You know, and one thing I loved about my mom, everything that she went through in life, she never blamed God. Never ever once did she blame God. Everything what, what my dad did, she never went to God and says, God, it's your fault. It actually made her read the Bible more. You know, she was up in the house to leave God. She was told that if you stop going to church, if you stop doing this, I will buy you a house. She said no. She said no. She still served God through everything. No, and I've seen the goodness of God in my mom's life. You know, how God was good to her. Through everything, she's such faithful to God. You know, I found after she passed, I found the Bible, her Bible. You know, every page in the Bible is highlighted. She loved God. She would get up at five o'clock in the morning like when we were kids. Five o'clock in the morning on her own to spend time with God before we all got up. Because it was, it was nine of us at that time when the twins came, so then there was like many more. You know, but she still served God. She ended up where she couldn't even walk, lying on her sick bed. Doctor told her she was going to die. You know, just after becoming Christians, for a year, year, she was the first one to start going to church. And she was a year serving God. And she ended up getting diabetes and ended up in her bed where my brothers in the middle of the night would have to carry her to take her to the toilet and she would wake us up screaming in pain. But you can just touch her clot and she would scream in pain. You know, and yet she still continued serving God. And God healed her. And gradually God healed her. She was told by the doctors, after she got healed, she was told by the doctors that you can never give birth again. And of course, she had nine kids, so why would she worry, be thinking about giving birth? She had nine children already, you know? And, you know, and, and it says that even if you do give birth, the, children would, the child will be born disabled. A year later, she ends up pregnant with twins. Born perfectly well, perfectly well, not too long with him. I know she told us, she said us that every time she would end up pregnant, she would always be praying for twins. And the last two she had was twins. You know, and I seen my mom, she seen the goodness of God. You know, there was even a time when we were, we were living in a caravan. We were living in Scotland, we were living in the caravan, and she still read her Bible, she still prayed. The time when we were living up in Dublin with my dad, when, when my family separated, and my dad went in holidays, you know where he went in holidays, you know, 
and he went along this for seven years. And she, for, for about a year, for a few months, she was living in the caravan. And the church we were going to, even in that stage of her living in the caravan, she was still thanking God. And there was a church that we were going to, got a new building, just like here. And the people in church were coming, building, and putting, building the church on the inside. And she would come and bring them food every day. She would make them stew, Irish stew, every day, bring them food. You know, the thankfulness of God. You know, so just, just saying all that to say, you know, continue to give God thanks. You know, continue to give God thanks. You know, because God is good. Amen. 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 You know, because we've all seen the goodness of God in our life. You know, so let's not forget that goodness. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are a good God, Lord. You are not a God, Lord God, that causes evil, Lord God. The evil, Lord God, that we see happening in the world, Lord God, has nothing to do with you, Lord God, but it has to do with man, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, Lord God, that you are a good God, Lord. We thank you for all the good things, Lord God, that you've done for us, Lord God. In our, in our walk with you, Lord God. Even before, Lord God, we surrendered our lives to you, Lord God. You were good to us, Lord God. We thank you, God. You're God that woke us up, Lord God, every morning, Lord God. You wake us up every morning, Lord God. We know it's not on our own strength, Lord God, that we wake up, Lord God, but it's because of you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for that goodness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, even when we fall short, Lord God, and we mess up, Lord God, that you are still good, Lord God. You're still good to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, comes, Lord God, to correct us, Lord God, when we do wrong, Lord God. And you desire, Lord God, for us to repent, Lord God, that wrong, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, you correct us, Lord God. Lord God, you said, Lord God, in your word, Lord God, you discipline those, Lord God, who you love, Lord God. So, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for, Lord God, for you discipline us, Lord God, because you love us, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord God. Lord, Lord God, your good mercies, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for sending your son, Lord God, to die for us, Lord God. We know, Lord God, you could have chosen, Lord God, not to do that, Lord God, but you choose to do it, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you love us, Lord God, that you care for us so much, Lord God, that your son died for us, Lord God, on the cross, Lord God, and he rose again, Lord God, on the third day, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for being obedient to your Father and going to the cross. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for our sins, because of your blood that was spilt, that we are forgiven today, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. Let us not forget, Lord God, how good, Lord God, you've been to us, Lord God. Let us never forget, Lord God, your goodness, Lord God. Let us desire, Lord God, to do good, Lord God. I pray, my God, for us as adults, Lord God, that we desire, Lord God, to do good, Lord God. That we not desire to do bad, Lord God. That we be good, Lord God, to each other, Lord God. That we be good to you, Lord God. We pray for the youth, Lord God. We pray, my God, their, their desire, Lord God, to do good, Lord God. Good unto you, Lord God. Not unto their parents, Lord God, but unto you, Lord God. That they be good, Lord God, unto you, Lord God. And I pray, my God, any sins, Lord God, that we have committed, Lord God, that, Lord God, you forgive us, Lord God. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord God. Anywhere, Lord God, we have fallen short, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, and we repent, Lord God, of our sins, Lord God. You desire, Lord God, for us to repent, Lord God. So we repent, Lord God, and we ask, Lord God, for your forgiveness, Lord God. Sins, Lord God, we commend, Lord God, knowingly, Lord God. I pray, my God, you forgive us, Lord God. And I pray you help us, Lord God, not to commit those sins, Lord God. That we stay in your word, Lord God. That we stay in prayer, Lord God. That we stay in fellowship, Lord God, with each other, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness, Lord God. Goodness, Lord God, that you've shown, Lord God, to each of us, Lord God, personally, Lord God. And we know, Lord God, that you said in your word, Lord God, everything you have created, Lord God, is good, Lord God. So I know, Lord God, that we can be good, Lord God. Because you have created us, Lord God, to be good, Lord God. So I pray, my God, that we desire, Lord God, to do good, Lord God. Our heart's desires, Lord God, will be to do good, Lord God, unto you, Lord God. 
and unto each other, O God. That we do go to our parents, O God. That we do go to our brothers, O God, our sisters, O God. That, O God, as others, O God, we do go to each other, O God. We do go, O God, to our work colleagues, O God. And we will not be evil, O God, to our work colleagues, O God. But we will be good children, O God. Father, help us, O God. Give us that desire, O God. I give you all the praise, O God. We give you all the glory, O God. For it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus with our powerful word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Receive grace to give rights and to do all the best things that are right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. One of the ways that God showed us his goodness is by sending Christ. In fact, there is no other goodness that is more than sending Jesus to us. Hallelujah. Before we partake in the communion, I would like us to read from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And while we are taking the communion for today, if you feel that you need a laying of hands for you're having a health challenge and you need a step forward, you want a laying of hands, there is, I believe in that. You can come forward in front of the altar while you are taking the communion, that they will be agreeing with you, be laying hands on you. If you have any if you believe, if you want that, it's not by force. Isaiah 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we did heed as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. This is what makes sickness illegal in your body. It makes sickness and affliction illegal, illegal, illegal. We have no roots, we have no rights to stay in our bodies because of these things that have been done. Wounded, chastised, bruised for our sake. It makes sickness illegal in our body. That's why whenever you see it, you challenge it, you confront it, you cause it to die. Hallelujah. It's not meant to be in your body. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Wounded for your transgression, brought to our iniquities. The punishment of our peace was on him. With his stripes, we are. Healed. Today we are invoking the healing covenant in the blood of Jesus. Because it is a covenant. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. And God said, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that the God has on my lips. It's a covenant. I am the Lord that healeth thee. But I can sense a prank with the enemy against God's peoples and their health. I can sense a prank. Hallelujah. So this community is to wage war against sickness, against disease, the ones that have been planted, the ones that are inside, the ones that have a time span, the one that works like a time bomb. There's a time that is given to me that when that boy get to this age, manifest. When that woman get to this age, appear. When that one get to this certain season of his or her life, appear. Sicknesses that operates as a time bomb. You want to confront them? Want to destroy them before time. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we come and we provoke the healing function, the healing power, the healing covenant in your blood. We re receive and we believe that your body was broken. Your blood was shed for us to become sons of God, for us to live a healthy life. A healthy life. So we come to your table today. We come by the new and the living way. We come by the blood of Jesus to this table to receive the broken body of Christ and the shed blood. Father, all manner of sickness or disease or affliction, inside or outside, I say against your people today, as the blood enters, 
As the body enters, let the sickness be broken, let it be destroyed once and for all in the name of Jesus. For I wish above all things, says the Lord, that thou may prosper and be the health, even as your soul prospers. By this communion, we declare that your children will live a healthy life, supernatural health, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease die now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before I was saying, um, if there's anyone that needs a little house, come, then he will pray for you and you will be free. You are great, yes, you are. Oh, you are. Walk upon the sea, you raise it You raise majesty.
in God says that will not happen. That woman has never lacked in her life up to date. Because when the man sent her packing, the children of God says, no, it has never happened. And they will not let her down. And that was how they picked her up. A woman who has never schooled, they sent her to school. And she went and learned bakery. Today, as we talk, she is a manager in one of the big hotels in Abuja. And she is rich today. So where did that come from? It's from that 2000. That 2000 made people to know her because her story went viral. And those who know God started sowing in her life too. And today, what is the result? It's positive. So let us give it honestly. Let's sow in the house of God. Because when you sow in the house of God, you will never regret it. Praise the Lord. So pray for your offering today. Send your offering a message. Tell God what you want in that sowing you want to make today. No matter how small it is, don't look at it that it is too small. As far as it is what you have, give it unto God and you will see you will see that our God is not a liar and is not a man so he can never lie praise the Lord
praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May you see just for a few minutes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what? God is a good God. He is a good God. You see, but the thing is that people fail to taste and see. The Bible says what? Taste and see. That what? And see that the Lord is good. You know, he's a good God. Praise the name of the Lord. But if you fail to taste of him, you won't, you won't, you won't locate and you won't find his goodness. But God is good. Praise the name of the Lord. He is a surely, surely good God. Praise God. And the Bible also says it's good to what? Give thanks to the Lord because what? He is good. His nature is good. As he said, there's not, he can't contradict his word. He's the, the word of God says he's a good God. So God is good. Everything about goodness you find in God. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know that as you go this week, the Lord will be good to you in the mighty name of Jesus. As you obey his word, as you walk in his ways, the goodness of God will follow you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very hard to describe good, you know, because it's just, it's good. Uh, when, when things are good around you, you know that there, there's peace around you. Praise the name of the Lord. You have joy. You have everything. You know, everything flows well. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so will it be for you. you experience the goodness of God this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I also want to just do something quickly before we move on. In, uh, just before we round up. Praise the name of the Lord. Last week I gave out uh, a license and today also I'm giving out another license. Uh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's the IMF ministerial license. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that has come all the way from the headquarters. Last week um, Pastor Marta wasn't around but I want to uh, do that this week. She's around with us. So can she come? Praise the name of the Lord. And on behalf of IMF, <laughs> yes, we try to hold. On behalf of the international minister, the international president of the uh, international ministers fellowship, I want to present this to you. Your ministerial license. God will help you to use it effectively. The Lord will grant you the unction to do the work in a greater dimension. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Are you not going to take me to mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. It will open doors for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Doors of ministration and doors of, you know, preaching and teaching to open for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Tomorrow we have uh, the Global School of Ministry. Hallelujah. At 12 o'clock and then uh, the intercessory prayer at 6 at 7. Praise God and Bible study on Wednesday and it is uh, at 7 on Wednesday. But, and then Friday it is um, the all night. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's going to be wonderful. Hallelujah. So please do get ready for that. Praise God. And just uh, in the week, or was it late? just yesterday actually, uh, I got it. No, Friday it was. I got a text. Uh, from Brother Alex, if you remember him, he came, he looked a little bit uh, like Chinese. Remember him? 
his mom his mom is from maybe Japan or China, I think it is. But he came and he was with us for some time, but not last year, but maybe the year before. But he now texts me and he said he's coming with his friend and all he's just looking forward to is coming to fellowship with us on Sunday uh, next week. So we're expecting him around, praise God. So that's awesome, you know. So his dad actually came here once. Uh, we, I followed him up, but I think he was in Spain or something because his phone was ringing and it was Spain, Spanish language coming up. So he must have gone to Spain. So he said he's coming, and uh, that's great news. Praise God. So God is still working, and God is still doing great things. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for every soul that the, the Lord is touching. And I know that God will perfect his work in them in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we rise even as we close? And I want to leave you with this word. Uh, today, praise God, Hallelujah! And we're going for Psalm one two one, Psalm one two one, Psalm one two one. David says, he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence my help comes from. He says, my help comes from the Lord, who made what the heaven and the earth. And by this, I say that your help will come this week in the mighty name of Jesus. From the throne of grace, your help will come in the mighty name of Jesus. God will raise up divine helpers for you this week in the mighty name of Jesus. The help of God you will not lack this week in the mighty name of Jesus. We have heard that he's a good God. The God is able to help us and he will help you this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. He says he will not allow your foot to want to be moved. Hallelujah. Your foot will not be moved this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Another person says he will not allow your feet to want to stumble. And he will not stumble this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every obstacle that the enemy puts in your path. The Lord will lift it up. In the mighty name of Jesus. He will make every crooked way straight for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither what sleep nor slumber. The one that is watching over you is not sleeping. He's not slumbering. The one that watches over you will keep you from every evil in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, The Lord is your shade at your right hand. He says, The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. And that I declare for you, that the sun will not strike you by day. Will not strike you by night in the name of Jesus. No evil will come your way, no sickness will come your way, nothing that will trouble your soul will come your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 7 he says, The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, and that shall be your portion. The Lord will preserve you from every evil in the mighty name of Jesus, from every sorrow, from every pain. The Lord will preserve you in the mighty name of Jesus. He says he will preserve your soul. Your soul shall be, be, be preserved in the mighty name of Jesus. He says he will preserve your going in and coming out. So shall it be that as you go out and come in this week, you are preserved in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not locate you. He will not locate any member of your family. He will not locate your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you will be preserved by the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And now forevermore. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us to lie down in great pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. He restores our soul. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Thou preparest the table before us in the presence of our enemies. Thou anointest our head with oil, our cup runneth over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May His face continually shine upon you. May He be gracious to you and receive peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week and God bless you. Thank you so much for coming and everyone that connected. Thank you so much. God bless you with you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.